place of Josh McCown, who was out because of a concussion, Johnny Manziel led Cleveland to a 28-14 win over Tennessee. That led many people to wonder what would happen when McCown came back. Well, we have that answer. Josh McCown will start ahead of Johnny Manziel this Sunday when the Raiders come to town. That after McCown passing the NFL's protocol on concussions. Jerome Bettis is still here. Jerome, what does this mean for Johnny? Actually, uh, you, you may think I'm crazy. I think this is great for Johnny. Really? Everybody's saying, oh, man, you know, Johnny's going back to a backup. You have to understand part of this could be a test. They want to see how are you going to respond, okay, because we, you're, you're this new Johnny Menzel. How are you going to respond going back to the number two position after you had a good game? That's part of it, one, okay? Can he be mm -hmm. the, the, this veteran guy that, that he's claiming to be now, okay, and not this young, immature football player that he's once been? So now that's part of the, the process. But the other part is he's still developing as a quarterback. So now what you, you see that the things that you've given him in the offseason – they're paying off. They're working. So let's continue to develop him, continue to work with him. He doesn't know all of the nuances of the NFL, of the quarterback position. So now you're giving him a chance, and he's, he's watching it, and now he's going to be a lot more invested in what's going on because he had an opportunity to play, and now he's going to make sure he's ready because he understands that he's a play away, and it gives the public an opportunity to now – in, like Johnny Manziel again. Mm -hmm. Because right now in Cleveland, no one really likes Johnny Manziel. So now you get this good game out of him. Now the public goes into his favor. And the biggest part of all of this is Johnny Manziel's confidence. Now you get his confidence at a sky high. You take him off the field. You put him back in a learning situation. And now he's going to soak up and want to learn more because he thinks inside, you know what? I'm ready. I know I can do that this. That winning is contagious. Because at the end of last season, he said some things about, well, if I can't get better, if I can't do it, I need to find something else to do. That is a sign that, that there's no confidence there as a football player. So now you're building his confidence, okay? You, you're building his resume. You're building his fan support. You're doing all these positive things, and he's learning at the same time. And you give yourself an opportunity to bring him off the bench as a spark plug if you need him. So I I think this is nothing but a positive situation for my, for Johnny Manziel. As long as he sees it that way and still understands that he has a great opportunity to get better. You buying that? Yeah, hey, I buy it. Um, he has to see it as an opportunity to get better. I think he will because I think the presence of McCown helps that. Um, if you had a quarterback that wasn't willing to help you, uh, that wasn't willing, that was experienced enough and wasn't willing to share those experiences with you and help guide you to elevate you, that would be different. But the fact that you're playing behind a quarterback that's willing to do that for you, I think goes a long way to facilitating Johnny Manziel's growth. And I think as long as he sees that, he's willing to learn. Because I think that, you got to remember, this would be far more difficult for him if it was the Johnny Manziel straight out of Texas A&M who yes. never played in the NFL, who believed he was it and who was this guy. <laughs> but the fact that he struggled the way that he struggled last year, went through what he went through, plus had the off-season or off-the-field issues that he had, I think that that's humbled him to a point where somebody is gracious um, from from just just from a human perspective as Josh McCown is. I think that helps Johnny Manziel immensely. But Jerome, back to your point about how nobody in Cleveland likes Johnny right now. I think if you left this to a fan vote, Johnny would win the starting job against the Oakland Raiders this Sunday. You, you disagree with that? No, I believe he, he possibly would. But you know, that's that that's that that one game we love you and then you you have a bad game and then you go back uh, to the bottom of the heat look do i think this current regime featuring mike Pettin and ray farmer do i think that they believe they have a little better chance to beat the oakland raiders with josh mccown than johnny manzel i believe that i believe they would like josh to play every game from here on out through the rest of this year because they think josh could save their jobs better than Johnny could save their jobs at this point in Johnny's growth. I said this to start the show and I'm going to stick by it. On draft night, Patton and Farmer were not remotely on board with even drafting Johnny Manziel. So when the owner overrules you and the quarterback coach is on your side, he's no longer there. He's been replaced. 
it's it's a bad situation from jump because you're you're with two guys who are the the two primary football decision makers who do not believe in you and your very unusual skill set. And as I I always say, you you either gulp the Johnny Kool Aid or you're going to spit it out because it's going to have a bitter taste to you because it is completely unconventional. I think it makes them nervous. Josh McCown makes them very comfortable. So I'm not surprised they went back to Josh, though I think the fans, especially the season ticket holders, would rather lose with Johnny than lose with Josh because it's just a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun to watch, right? So they're doing what they need to do to save their jobs which I don't think will get saved at all. I think this will be their, their last year, one and done this year. So do you think, let me ask you this question, do you think it's beneficial for Johnny Menzel to go back to the backup role? Uh, like, like I said you know, earlier, I think it's a, bene it's a benefit, big benefit to him as the backup right the, now. The, the only reason I can see some positive there is this is the worst supporting cast offensively in the National Football League. No, no joke. Yeah. Isaiah Crowell, really? I, I mean, seriously? He did average more than four yards okay. carry, though. He's okay, but he's not Jerome Bettis, right? Yeah. He's right. not so, Emmitt yeah. Smith. There, there's no difference maker. I like Travis Benjamin a lot. He can fly, but he is not a difference making receiver, and he's the best of the bunch. The rest of them are all undrafted, unnameable type receivers. And your offensive line has a great left tackle, and the rest of them are turnstiles all down the line. So you're going to be running for your life. And God bless Josh McCown because it, well, you saw what he yeah. did. He, he vaults into the end zone, helicopters into the end zone, and got concussed. He's just trying to score, just trying to survive. They're all trying to survive. I hope Johnny winds up somewhere else. That's just me because I think this is an unwinnable situation in Cleveland. All I know is if Josh struggles on Sunday against the Raiders, we'll be hearing the Johnny oh, chants. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the backup gonna, quarterback you, quickly beca that. becomes the favorite. And you know what? The Raiders are no joke to me. Mm -hmm. they're, they're going yeah. to cause problems for well, everybody. I, I wanted to mention yeah, that. I, I'm, I'm, surprised, I'm pleasantly surprised at what I'm seeing from the Raiders. They don't seem as pathetic. Yeah, here. after the first game, that. everybody Derek kind of Carr, ripped them. Derek Carr was taken in the draft later mm -hmm. than, than Johnny Manziel. He was. Let's see what he does. Let's see what Amari Cooper does. Yeah. And some of those guys on defense, some really great pieces. Yeah. More first take after the break. Keep it here. Battle throughout training camp, and now three games into the season, Ohio State still hasn't definitively settled on a full-time starting quarterback. Apparently, Urban Meyer doesn't think Cardale Jones or JT Parrott have done enough to earn that distinction. Stephen A., what should Urban Meyer do here? Keep Cardale Jones in the lineup. That's all. It's just that simple to me. Yeah, he wasn't that impressive. He went 4-9. Through two interceptions, we understand that, but the entire team looked ill prepared to play football Saturday against Northern Illinois. Let's just call it what it is. I think this particular struggle was on Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer, we know to be an exceptional coach, a great coach, champion multiple times over. We know what this man's resume entails, but I thought Saturday afternoon's performance, uh, he didn't seem, this team didn't seem as prepared as I'm accustomed to seeing his, team, his teams be. JT Barrett can play. We all know that JT Barrett had a sensational season prior to going down before Cardell Jones ended up coming in and shellac in Wisconsin and the Big Ten Championship game and then the national semifinal. Uh, they obviously won uh, before beating you know, Oregon for the national championship. They beat Alabama in the national semifinal. Cardell Jones was the quarterback for all three of those games. And coming into this season, we know we intend, they intend for this to be his last. And then JT Barrett could come in there and take over the helm then. It's a good problem to have. Um, if, if, if he's playing like garbage, you pull him out and you put JT Barrett in like you're doing now. But I don't think you change the formula. Cardell Jones needs to stay the starting quarterback for the Ohio State Buckeyes. I, I don't like your formula. Why is if, that? if he plays like garbage, you yank him? That's all. Okay, so... That's anybody. Uh, I feel I, that I'm, way about I'm anybody, putting, pro or college. I'm, I'm putting Saturday on Urban Meyer for a very different reason than okay, you are. please. You want to talk about a quick hook? He yanked Cardale Jones, and we both agree that Cardale should be the starter. He yanked him in the second quarter after he'd thrown nine passes, which included, obviously, two interceptions against Northern Illinois at home. You cannot do that to a quarterback. It's the hardest position, as I think you would agree with me, to play in all of sports. 
Confidence is the utmost of the requirements, mm -hmm. and you can't look over your shoulder thinking that your head coach is going to yank you in favor of somebody who has had a whole lot of success playing that position last year for your football team for an extended period of time in J.P. Barrett. Mm -hmm. So you have to, with conviction, go with one or the other. And if he plays like garbage into the second quarter, you have to let him play his way out of the garbage. Because I'm here to say that game ended up 20-13. to 13. If he had stuck with Cardale, I think Cardale would have figured it out and they would have won much, it would have been 30-13. to 13. Well, my retort to that, Skip Bayless, would be this. If JT Barrett would have started quarterback instead of Cardale Jones, and he did the same thing, then Urban Meyer would have yanked him for Cardale Jones. The reason being is that the way this situation is structured at this particular moment in time, you know, Urban Meyer had a very unique and great, great problem to have. Braxton Miller is a, is a Heisman candidate. He goes down. JT Barrett comes in. He's playing lights out. Then he goes down. Then Cardell Jones comes in, and he handles his business and delivers a national championship. Then they turn around after all of that. Okay, and what happens? What transpires? You got all three wanting to come back this year, and Braxton Miller is willing to play wide mm -hmm. receiver. And so when you look at it from that perspective, it's clearly obvious. It's obvious and clear that Urban Meyer knows what the situation is, and so do the quarterbacks. There's no definitive one guy that you're going to leave in there no matter what. It's not because you just lost confidence in him. It's because you believe in both that much. So when one is having a relatively bad day, you can bring in the next guy because you have no doubt that they're going to be able to produce. This is not an ordinary quarterback situation. Hey, but you can't this play is, musical quarterbacks you, with I, those I, two. I, what I'm saying to you is that Urban Meyer clearly walked into this season with that idea in mind and they all knew that was going to be the M.O. because of this situation. It was very, very unique. So because of this situation, both of them knew at any given moment you could be yanked in favor of the other. Cardell Jones is just there trying to learn how to be a better quarterback to elevate himself to the next level. And JT Barrett is trying to make sure that he continues yeah. to build off the of last season. Under normal circumstances, you're absolutely right. I'm just sitting there and saying that this is a an extreme aberration. This is not normal. And both quarterbacks understood that and Urban Maya understood that. Okay, if he had given a ball to Ezekiel Elliott more, this wouldn't have even been an issue. Okay, but after the game, I think Urban Meyer even came to the conclusion he had messed this one up. He said after the game, maybe I should pick one. And I define picking one the way he's saying it, and he's going to do it today, as picking and sticking. Where, where once he names, if it's Cardale, I hope it is for his sake, he will stick with it. He, okay. won't, he won't have a short leash the way he did. Last Maybe the leash was too shorter. Maybe yeah. it was. Maybe it was too short, but I do understand the situation. Well, we'll find out later today, and they host Western Michigan Saturday at the Shoe. Looking forward to seeing that game. Cam Chancellor is returning to the Legion of Boom, and our Hall of Famer, Jerome Bettis, is returning to the desk to offer his thoughts on a big addition to the Hawks' defense. That's coming up.